good stories. Malcolm X. Hey, that's my seat in my book. Uh, Mikey, stop bullying me. Education today starts now. <laughs> Welcome to Education Today. I'm John Zisch from the Armstrong School District. Armstrong County Community Awareness Day is coming up on Monday, October 19th, 2009. The goal of Community Awareness Day is to ignite a spark in the community, a spark of common purpose to help battle addiction and abuse. To talk about Community Awareness Day, we have several outstanding guests with us tonight. Welcome to Education Today. Would each of you please introduce yourselves and talk a little bit about your roles in Community Awareness Day? I'm sorry. I didn't know who was going first. You're going first. Okay. Hi, I'm Joellen Bowman. I'm the Executive Director of Haven, Armstrong County's Domestic Violence and Sexual Assault Center. I'm uh, Gary DiComo, Magisterial District Judge in Fort City and uh, co-founder of Armstrong County Community Awareness Day. Hi, my name is Jill Pless. I'm the Assistant Director at Arc Manor Addiction Recovery Center here in Catanning and I've been, Arc Manor has been involved with Community Awareness Day since the beginning. Well, thank you all for coming on the show to talk about this very important issue, uh, Community Awareness Day. Well, what is the goal of Community Awareness Day and how did it start? Uh, the goal of Community Awareness Day is to raise the level of prevention aware awareness in Armstrong County. Uh, at the time we started it, we thought if we had a specific day in our county, we, we could easily reach a lot of people on a specific day, have a coordinated effort, for prevention. Okay. And when did it start and how did it start? Started in uh, 2004. Uh, we had uh, coordinated various drug programs throughout the county from like 1994 to 2004. Uh, uh, it started actually uh, from a, a failure that we had. I felt a failure. We had programs throughout the county. Sometimes we would have uh, 50 people attend, sometimes would have 250 people attend. Uh, we had lethal, highly addictive drugs in the community and we couldn't get the audience to the program. So we felt if we didn't, uh, if we couldn't bring the people to the program, would take the program to the people. And that's how Community Awareness Day started. Very good. Celebrating six years here, huh? Six yeah. years. That is yeah. tremendous. Each of you has a unique perspective about why Community Awareness Day is important. Can you each tell us some you know, real life stories about some of the evils that are out there in our community and why we have to combat them? Well, I can speak from you know, my perspective as far as you know, drugs and alcohol go that um, addiction and uh, abuse of, you know, of substances can really take a toll on not only the person who you know has the the addiction but also you know those that um, live with them that love them that care for them as well as the community in general um, a lot of times I mean part of community awareness day is getting you know this this word out and education out and awareness and prevention um, for example a lot of people don't even realize that their age of first use of substance abuse is between eight and ten years old and you know people are shocked to hear yeah, that and uh, that you know that's part of you know why we we come together to you know there's a lots of things that we need to do but this is one way that we can get the community involved in, in, in having the awareness and knowing what things that they can do to you know start with the children and and you know help the community hmm. well I remember Scott and Jesse saying and when <coughs> Larry Car Sheriff Crawford and Scott and Jesse our district attorney and and Judge Decomo started Community Awareness Day, one of the things that they said was they can't arrest their way out of these social issues. And what I appreciate about it is that sexual and domestic violence are oftentimes something people don't want to talk about and a lot of times perceived as a woman's issue and only a haven's issue. But what Community Awareness Day does, in my opinion, is it validates the victims that we serve and has 
the community responding to victims, as Jill said, raising the awareness, understanding domestic and sexual violence, knowing it's not just an issue that Haven works with, but Judge DeComo, uh, Mr. Andresi, Sheriff Crawford, we all are impacted by this every day and what we try to do to, to help victims. So um, understanding the dynamics of domestic and sexual violence, you know, in Armstrong County, um, since September 1st, most of you are aware, we've had two domestic violence homicides. So we can't pretend it doesn't happen here and we can't pretend that we um, aren't impacted by those social ills. And it's a societal issue, it's not a women's issue. And we need everyone out there to help identify, understand domestic and sexual violence and help combat it. We uh, built a new jail probably uh, five years ago with triple the capacity of the old jail and the jail's full and over half the people in the jail are there because of DUIs, drug cases, or criminal acts committed while under the influence of or addicted to alcohol or other drugs. Some of the other crimes are domestic violence, assaults, uh, robberies, burglaries. Mm -hmm. So it impacts the entire community. Well, that was a very sobering uh, and important introduction as to why community awareness day is really a crucial thing that's been going on. And I, we at the Armstrong School District want to thank you for doing this, and we're pleased to partner in the effort. Um, and it's coming up Monday, October 19th, Community Awareness Day. What are some activities and initiatives that are going to happen on Monday, October 19th? We have a lot of things going. As you know, Armstrong School District is helping to create two videos. One's going to be shown to elementary students and one is going to be shown to secondary students. And what I'm excited about is there are partners across the county um, coming here to show their support and show um, the students that we are all engaged in this. And our theme this year is respect. And I think Judge Jacob will talk a little bit more about that. But you know, we've been looking at the fact that a lot of times what um, initiates some of the behaviors that we're concerned about is a lack of respect for yourself, a lack of respect for others, and a lack of respect for the laws in your community. And we're really trying to get students and young people to be more engaged in those areas. So um, the elementary students are going to be signing a pledge. And the other thing that's um, unique this year is a blue ribbon campaign, which is this is during Red Ribbon Week. And anyone that recognizes somebody engaged in a respectful behavior is going to be giving a blue ribbon to uh, another student. So we really want the students to take some responsibility and to be engaged in this activity. So those are some of the things we're doing. That's excellent. Um. There's also going to be a, uh, an event at uh, Lenape Tech on, I believe, the 19th? Mm -hmm. OK, uh, from 4 to 6.30, where um, we invite all the community to attend. And there's going to be a lot of fun activities for, um, for kids and, and teenagers and, and, and you know the, the adults as well. So there'll be more information coming out about that as the days go on. So community awareness night. <laughs> yes. That's what we call it. Atlanta yeah. Tech. Started four. out as a day. Now it's become a week. Yeah. <laughs> Could you repeat the date and time again, please? That was October 19th from 4 to 6.30 at Atlanta Tech. Sounds like a great event for everyone to come to. Yes. Last year we had mm. over 750 people come through there. Yeah. Over 750 mm -hmm. people. Uh, when Joellen mentioned respect, uh, we can see it, myself and the other magistrates in the area, uh, we can see uh, a lack of respect starting in the elementary school, and your <coughs> teachers see it. Uh, the parents, that lack of respect for the parents, yeah. then it translates to lack of respect for the teachers, the administrators, and before you know it, even if we talk to the kids during this time period when they're growing up, before long, it's a complete lack of respect for authority, and then when they're 18 years old, they see guys like me, Magistrate Goldstrom, Magistrate Owen. And uh, that's what we're trying to prevent, better people's relationships with other people. Yeah. Very good. Well, um, the timing of this is wonderful, having Community Awareness Day around Red Ribbon Week. And for those of you who don't know, Red, Red Ribbon Week is a national anti-drug observance, uh, an effort to work towards a drug-free society. What led to the moving of Community Awareness Day from its usual occurrence in January to time on or about Red Ribbon Week in uh, October? Well, when I started Community Awareness Day, I thought it would be good at the beginning of the year, fresh new start to the year, 
raise the level of awareness at that time of the year. New Year's uh, resolution. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> New Year's resolution, yeah. that's what yeah, it was. Right. <laughs> so what happened over the years, uh, we kept having a little problem coordinating with the schools because the teachers and students just got back after a long holiday. So the teachers, uh, we received input from the teachers and the administration of all the school districts, and we changed it to October, in which I think is going to be a good date. It falls in line with the, uh, the program, and it's, the program will be put on right before two other holidays, three other holidays, Thanksgiving, Christmas, and New Year's. Sure. So we get the message out at the beginning of the school year, and it would probably help to get that message out early. Very good. And like you said, it's part of Red Ribbon Week, which is already, a, like you said, a national campaign awareness. So it just really fit to, to occur the same, same week. It is sort of a nice, a nice marriage yeah. of the two. Um, Joellen, you touched on this a little bit, but would, would, would each of you or some of you like to touch on uh, what the activities will be at the elementary level? We will be doing the pledge. We'll have the video, and um, we have some talking points for the teachers, for the students, and again, trying to get them engaged in the um, sharing the blue ribbons. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you're out there and you get a blue ribbon, wear it with pride because it's going to say CAD, which is uh, the acronym for community. We're going to stay on the top, and it's going to have respect on it. <coughs> so, what it's going to show is that you've engaged in respectful behaviors, which is what a part of what we want to do. You, you engage in respectful behaviors at the elementary level by being kind to your peers, by not bullying, by um, helping somebody pick something up when they drop it, by saying please and thank you, by being respectful with, to your school community. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of things that you can do and then we're going to talk about how you do it, respect yourself, how you respect others and how you respect um, the community. So we're really looking forward to you engaging in these behaviors and um, helping us turn some things around here in Armstrong County. You mentioned the pledge. Is that kind of like a promise that students fill out? Or? It is. It is. And we're doing, we did it um, as a kind of a recipe for respect. And I know we can, we can show you the pledge that the students are going to be signing and we're going to have them read it and um, sign off on it to try to do that commitment. One of the things that um, we understand is if you get students engaged in their society and to care about each other and to care about themselves, it creates an environment where um, it's m we're much less likely to see the challenges that we're trying to deal with, the drug and alcohol issues, the um, illegal behaviors, the dating and sexual violence, and we understand that that's primary prevention. And we really know that if we can help create this community, you know, Armstrong County is um, pretty unique in this arena. We're, we don't have any other county that we know of in the country, let alone Pennsylvania, doing these kind of activities. And we want to make Armstrong County a good place for all of us to live. Very nice. And some of that information that's going to be, good, you know, like the pledge and things to the kids, you know, we want the parents to be looking for that as well to come home so that there can be a discussion because as studies have shown that parents have the most influence, you know, w with their kids. So we hope there's, you know, it opens up a dialogue or communication as well. Absolutely. That's good. You definitely need that parent involvement. Right. Mm -hmm. um, right. How about some activities at the secondary level? What, how are they different from the elementary level activities? Mm -hmm. What we did at the secondary level, each year we try to fit our programs to the individual needs of the schools and the community. Uh, in the past we brought uh, people in recovery to all the schools and coordinated the programs, but this year we decided to let the schools tell us what they need. Uh, Catanning's need <coughs> might be different from Freeport's need. So they're going to tell us what they need and we're going to coordinate a program uh, tailor-made to the schools, either we in the community or some outside programs that we might bring in or the schools might bring in. Hmm. That sounds like an innovative approach. Now I understand we have a video that you're sharing with uh, students in the, in the school districts in Armstrong County. Hmm. And uh, I'd like to get, let our viewers see a moment or two of this video that you're sharing in the Schools for Community Awareness Day. Let's take a look. <laughs> Respect yourself by taking care of your body. Do not smoke or use smoke with tobacco products because they can cause long-term health problems. Respect yourself. Do not drink alcohol or use drugs. Besides being illegal, it is dangerous because when you're under the influence of drugs and alcohol, it is difficult to make safe decisions. 
Respect yourself by taking the time to learn about others and better understand your differences. Respect yourself by being active. Commit to doing an hour of physical activity every day. Walk, run, swim, play sports. Respect yourself by eating right. Those with an average weight are less likely to develop health problems and often feel better, both physically and emotionally. Respect yourself. If someone is doing something to hurt your body or making you feel uncomfortable, tell them no, and then talk to a trusted adult. Respect yourself. If someone is calling you names or saying hurtful things, ask them to stop. And if they don't, tell a friend or adult who can help you. Respect yourself by being cautious about who you allow in, into your personal space, including online and with your cell phone. Respect and value others regardless of their religion, their race, their gender, and their physical and emotional abilities. Pledge to not say mean, harmful things to others. We are all different, but one thing we all have in common, we all have feelings that can be hurt. Wow, that was tremendous. Now this is all a lot of great information. How does Community Awareness Day come together each year? Who puts it all together? Well, we have a... <laughs> We have a committee and a team that puts it together, and we uh, coordinate it. We've been meeting down my office at, at lunchtime. That seems to work for everybody this year. And, uh, of course, I have to buy the pizza. So I don't buy it. <laughs> That's and, right. Uh, we, uh, we have everybody from the community come in that is interested. Uh, we get ideas from everybody how we should proceed for the year. Uh, uh, Joellen, uh, I have to say, Joellen and her crew of workers from Haven have been instrumental since the beginning of Community Awareness Day, just uh, hard workers in coordinating this event. Arc Manor's joined in the whole time since the beginning. Uh, we really have a uh, core <coughs> of hardworking volunteers. That's good. And I like the group picture that you mm -hmm. had taken at yeah. the courthouse where it shows all of the agencies and yeah. the people involved. It's pretty amazing to mm -hmm. get everybody together at one it time. <laughs> But that shows, we, we yes. call ourselves the Community Awareness Day Partners, and I think that mm -hmm. that's, um, if you look at the list, and I know that we'll share that with you, you'll see the variety of professionals and people and it's kind of the care and our partners that have engaged in this, mm -hmm. in this effort, so it's a, a good team effort. It seems like everyone's tru truly pulling together for this, mm -hmm. and how mm -hmm. unique is this across the state, to have this kind of collaboration in one county? I, uh, I, have, I don't know of any other county throughout the state of Pennsylvania that has such a day or a week like we have. Uh, I believe our county is kind of unique. Uh, we have complete countywide cooperation from the school districts to the, uh, of course we're in your studio today and, and the Armstrong School District has been instrumental in providing us with a studio. Um, Freeport School District, Leechburg School District, every school district in our county, all elected officials, uh, I've never had anyone tell me no. You know, sometimes our county um, has differences of opinion on issues, but we stand together when it comes to protecting our youth and community. That's right. Well, we're going to take a short break. We'll be right back with Armstrong School District's Education Today to talk more about Community Awareness Day. Stay tuned. Before I came to IUP, I had no idea what college would be like or what role I would play or where I'd be in the future. But when I came to IUP, everything changed. I met people who really made me feel like I belonged. I had great classes at a great nationally ranked university. Hi, my name is Megan Miller. I'm a fine arts major and this is my university. And we're back with Education Today. Tonight's topic is Community Awareness Day. And we are joined by District Judge J. Gary DeComo, Joe Ellen Bowman, and Jill Pless. Next question for you, District Judge DeComo. Let's see, this is the sixth annual Community Awareness Day, right? What was it like that first year? What kind of an effort did it take to get this off the ground? Uh, the first year was an, an enormous effort. I, uh, 
started bringing some people together uh, for the project. I asked the ACMH Foundation to pay for postage because I wanted to uh, started preparing a flyer that we wanted to get out to every household in Armstrong County. Always ambitious. And uh, <laughs> and uh, I told them the pr the the cost would be about three thousand dollars. But I, uh, so they gave me a check for three thousand dollars for the postage. Well, I didn't know that to get that price on. 35,000 or 40,000 flyers, you had to put mailing labels on them, oh. and then you had to <laughs> sort them by zip code, uh. and then you had to deliver the zip codes to the respective post offices. So I had uh, 40,000, say, in my office, and I started to panic. And this was two or three days before we were supposed to mail them out. So I called uh, Ark Manor. I called uh, <laughs> Joellen from Haven, yes. and uh, I called uh, Don Coker Taylor from uh, Lenape Bow Tech, and between uh, all of us, we were ab able to accomplish that. But it was uh, it was something else. I I, I didn't think we were going to get it done, <laughs> but we did. In fact, I have the original from 2004. This is the first Community Awareness Day uh, flyer. I don't know whether you could see this. First Community wow. Awareness Day flyer we ever sent out. Huh. And we sent out, uh, like I said, 35,000 to 45,000 of those to every, uh, every household in Armstrong County. So it's quite a large undertaking, but it's gotten easier over the years. But the first year was uh, interesting. That's mind-numbing just to think of what you had to yeah, overcome it was to it was get hard. that out. But that speaks to the dedication and everyone's belief that this is a crucial message. Um, Thank you. Yeah. I recall the weather wasn't very cooperative either. No, it, didn't. it was in January. We had sheriff was, deputies yeah. delivering to Templ Templeton and <laughs> Joellen taking it to Apollo and yeah. it's, it was hard. Yeah, Pony Express. Yeah. yeah, it was. But it really has grown over the years where now we have so many volunteers and so much help and people wanting to be involved that it's, it's, it's really grown and, and it's been a wonderful thing. That's great to hear. Mm -hmm. Well, now we have viewers watching, and maybe they may be wondering, what can they, as ordinary citizens, do to help <coughs> combat the evils of drugs and domestic violence? What advice does each of you have? Well, to become informed, one of the things that we'll uh, show you on the screen now are hotlines and numbers that you can call um, for Ark Manor, for Haven, for um, the Drug Task Force, so that you understand um, some of the laws, some of the challenges that we face. <coughs> and understand domestic violence, sexual assault, some of the early warning signs, understand how to help somebody uh, be a significant other, help somebody that you may <coughs> recognize as impacted by domestic or sexual violence. And I know Jill can <coughs> speak to the drug and alcohol piece. But the other thing that we need to probably address is that these are all interrelated. A lot of times domestic and sexual violence are committed under the influence of drugs and alcohol. They don't cause domestic and sexual violence, but they certainly impact domestic and sexual violence. So that's why we do this together. You know, none of us work in a vacuum. None of us um, are, um, we're just also interrelated, and I appreciate the working relationship that we have. But that's how they can become better informed and better involved. Certainly call some of those numbers they're seeing now on the screen. Mm -hmm. um, yes, and there's some websites there. You know, just become informed and understand. And there's a lot of, uh, um, co there's community coalitions that you can get involved with. I know, if, you know, as far as drugs and alcohol and other um, issues, that the Arc Manor website, you know, you, the person can go to, and, and there's some information about some community <coughs> coalitions if, you know, people are interested in getting involved and knowing, you know, how to help. Um, and just as far as the Arc Manor services that we have and, and the hotline, we have a hotline, we have parent um, family support group and, and all that kind of, there's a lots of resources and as well as other um, resources if someone just wants to read online, maybe they're just a little, you know, scared about making a phone call or whatever, but there's a lot of information that, that you can get and we have a lot of links to, to a lot of that. I think Jill's point's really good because one of the things that we understand is that people don't become involved because they don't know what to do. They're not comfortable with it. They're not sure um, if what they're seeing is something that they should become involved in. They don't really understand it. And it's, it's a bystander intervention um, effect. And that's kind of what we're trying to push this year is if you understand how to get involved and how to intervene safely and respectfully, then you're more likely to do so. And that's why what we're asking for you to do this year, that's why our theme is respect. 
because um, a lot of times you can follow your gut. You kind of know maybe when somebody that you care about has an addiction, but you're really not sure what to do with it. You kind of sense that maybe sexual violence is going on in a family or domestic violence, but you're really not sure how to intervene safely. And that's what we, we hope to accomplish this year. Also, you should, uh, community members should report uh, suspicious activity in their communities to the appropriate authorities. That's one key thing because there's not enough police out there. There's never going to be enough police out there. So communities got to band together, join a crime watch. Uh, if you have kids, take your kids to the reality tour. You could contact Ark Manor. Uh, the Armstrong Reality Tour. Armstrong County an Reality resource. Tour is an excellent program. Uh, anything you could do to educate yourself and educate your kids would be helpful. Hmm. Now, are there any resources our viewers could consult to get more information? Anything going out on Community Awareness Day in terms of information to any segments of the population? Or? Actually, at Lenape Tech, in the evening of Community Awareness Day from 4 to 6.30 that Jill mentioned, um, we are all going to be there with resources from our respective disciplines. So, you know, that would be a perfect way to come and get some information, some pamphlets, some resources, and again, the websites that you'll see on your screen. Absolutely. I do want to encourage our viewers to please block off Monday, October 19th, 4 to 6.30 right. p.m. at Lenape Tech. That'll be a, a must-attend event. Um, if you care about your community, please go. Um, I have uh, a question for you, District Judge Jacomo. I understand that uh, something that you started, it's related to Community Awareness Day. Uh, about 10 years ago, it's called Drugs Kill Dreams. And uh, it's an initiative that you uh, began. And can you tell us about this Drugs Kill Dreams movement and, and why it, what might be planned for its 10th anniversary? Yeah. Yeah, actually, I, I d I've done programs in the school and community since 1994, uh, but in the year 2000, uh, a young lady uh, in our Manor Township Lions fourth grade poster contest had a slogan on top of her poster, and that slogan was Drugs Kill Dreams. So I adopted, some people say I stole <laughs> the slogan, and I've been using, I have a trademark on the slogan, and I've been using the slogan ever since. And uh, 2010 is the 10 year anniversary and we're gonna put together a large celebration. I have a new video with new sports people on the video, mm -hmm. new people from the jail that are in jail because of uh, addictions and a whole new program. That's so excellent. we're gonna put a nice program together. Great advocacy on your part. And uh, I understand you often track down local and professional athletes to help put this drugs kill dreams message out. Uh, can you tell us about uh, any recent uh, luminaries from the sports world who you might have uh, encountered and gotten on a recent video? We have uh, new Steelers for this year are um, Mendenhall, mm -hmm. uh, we have Tomlin, we have uh, Limus Swede, I got him at training camp. I got probably six or seven new Steelers. I probably have 14 total, have uh, six Pirates, uh, Plus, we have uh, numerous more people in addiction. Hmm. And sometimes the kids, when they see kids their own age that are having a problem, they uh, pay attention. Yeah. Well, um, this is just too good to pass up. I was wondering if, if we could please show our viewers uh, a clip of you interviewing Coach Mike Tomlin uh, from the Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, well, we have a, uh, a we, the clip, it doesn't show me, it just shows oh, okay. Mike Tomlin. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but, but, That's uh, good. You're welcome to use it, and I'd like, I'd like for you to use it. Okay. He, he was a tremendous uh, addition to the program. Mm -hmm. I called down there, and within three days, he called me back and said, I'd do it. What a guy. Let's take a look at Steelers coach Mike Tomlin helping Judge Jacoma with Drugs Kill Dreams. Hi, I'm Mike Tomlin, head coach of your Pittsburgh Steelers. I'm challenging you to just say no. Yeah, I know you've heard it before, but it's very real. Drugs kill dreams. Don't let drugs kill your dreams. Well, that's our show for today. Thanks to our guests for being on the show. Thanks to Gary DeComo, a district judge from Ford City. Joellen Bowman of Haven Domestic Violence slash Sexual Assault Shelter. And Jill Pless of Ark Manor Addiction Recovery Center in Catanning. I'd also like to thank the Community Awareness Day partners who work so hard to make this annual event a success. Please join us again next week for another look at the Armstrong School District. For more information about what's going on in the district, please check out our websites. Have a great week.